This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. The Premier maintains he will continue to govern in majority despite one of his own members going rogue and accepting the role of Speaker against his wishes. Sue Hickey has pledged to support the government's budget and back its confidence in Parliament, but says she may stray from party lines on other issues. Senior Liberals are scathing of the situation, describing it as selfish and a betrayal of voters. Congratulations on your appointment. Yes, congratulations. Sue Hickey's first full day as Speaker started with a confrontation. We're not moving! Can, can you just hear me No, we can't. Okay. Telling people protesting the housing crisis to get off her lawn. My role is we are as Speaker we're not listening. to Enough. ask you to very we don't peacefully want to listen. move no. on. Not the only tense moment as she was questioned about her surprise appointment as Speaker. Did you know that you would be nominated as Speaker? Uh, I had an inkling. I have done no deals with anybody. Backed by Labor and the Greens, the Liberal member blindsided her own party, pipping its preferred nominee for Speaker of the House of Assembly, a position maintaining order and proper process. But her place is more important now because she has a deciding vote in a parliament on a knife edge. She says she will support budget supply and confidence in the government. In all other matters, I will consider my position based on the merits of the argument and what is in the best interests of the people of Tasmania. The Premier's majority government now hanging by a thread, relying on an MP who has already dramatically gone rogue from the party. Do you admit that you're now governing in minority? No. Uh, we have uh, 13 members, um, yes, an independent speaker, uh, but Sue Hickey is a member of the Liberal Party and uh, we have 13 members, that's a majority. Senior Liberal figureheads have described the move as selfish, treacherous and a betrayal of voters. Look, I was extremely disappointed. We need to respect what the Tasmanian people told us a few weeks ago at the election, which is that they wanted a stable majority Liberal government. Labor denies it's politicised to the important role of Speaker. I think if anything this approach has depoliticised the role of the Speaker who traditionally has been a government member. Now the Speaker is truly independent and can assess legislation on its merits. Was this about destabilising the government? Absolutely, 100% not. Uh, this was about making sure that we had a healthy, democratically functioning parliament. That healthy parliament facing a testing question time today. I know members are opposite are, are hoping for, for the government to have challenges. As the ground rules are set by its new speaker. I can do this all day long. I can stand up and down like a yo-yo and get a lot of exercise doing it. So I respectfully ask once again that we have order and discipline in this house. Michael Green, Southern Cross News. In Parliament today, the opposition questioned if a conflict of interest exists within the government over its handling of Airbnb incentives. The government has deregulated the sector, some say contributing to the housing crisis. Labor claims two MPs have skin in the game because they operate Airbnb properties themselves. Properties owned by government MPs now in the spotlight. We know at least two of your colleagues have properties listed on Airbnb and stays, namely the Health Minister Ferguson, who owns this property, and your colleague the Education Minister, Mr Rockcliffe, who owns this property. The holiday rentals are in Bridport and Swansea. The opposition now demanding to know why the duo didn't declare a conflict of interest when the government decided to deregulate the sharing economy last year. The housing minister says... We really don't know where this question's going. We don't run an audit here of anyone's properties. We, I don't think we've anything to answer for. It is unconscionable to think that they have not declared a conflict of interest when they're sitting around the cabinet table making decisions about exactly this issue, regulating the sharing economy, and they haven't disclosed the fact that they own investment properties that gain financially. 
Last month, the government offered landlords $13,000 incentives to offer their homes as rentals to low-income earners. Mr Yench didn't answer whether Mr Ferguson or Mr Rockliffe were eligible in question time. We're doing what we need to do to make houses Are available they eligible? for people in Tasmania who need them. But this afternoon released a statement saying ministers will not benefit from the scheme. Questions have also been raised about whether any Labor MPs own holiday rentals. No, they don't. Monika Dadson at Southern Cross News. The coroner has found a man killed in a car crash in Forthside was driving while drunk and on drugs. Latrobe man Timothy David Bryan died when his ute rolled off Forthside Road and into a paddock in September 2016. A toxicology report reveals the 36-year-old was driving at more than three times the legal limit while having significant levels of cannabis in his system. Mr Bryan was also not wearing a seatbelt. The coroner has not made any any formal recommendations. In a major boost for Tasmanian farmers, another multi-million dollar irrigation scheme is about to be constructed. It's hoped the Scottsdale irrigation scheme will increase the region's production and create more jobs. Since the 1960s, Cameron Moore's family has grown and packed vegetables on their 1,000-acre farm. And soon, once the new Scottsdale Irrigation Scheme is up and running, the family hopes to expand its operations even further. We've got a dry land property down the road, so we'll be able to turn that into an irrigated property and, um, yeah, be able to grow more vegetables here in the beautiful northeast. The federal government pouring in $25 million to help make the $60 million scheme a reality. Construction now set to begin next month. It will include building a dam at Camden Rivulet and a nearby mini hydro station. This is going to ensure that 8,600 additional megalitres of water are going to be there, perhaps most importantly when the farmers need it most. Uh, a major project in the northeast, uh, 60 odd construction jobs during the project's construction uh, and it uh, provides uh, a high level of surety of water too. For many, the scheme has been a long time coming. The North East taken plenty of hits over the last, I'll oh, say, 20 years with, with sawmills and vegetable factories and clay mines and all that sort of stuff, butter factories shutting down. It's been a journey that probably started around 20 years ago, more uh, strongly about 11 years ago. 80 northeast farmers have so far subscribed and it's hoped at least 20 more will buy in. Stuart Bush says the scheme will allow his family to double its herd number to 800 cows. It's giving us the opportunity to um, yeah, grow more product in our dairy and uh, expand our milking platform and grow more grass to increase milk production. I think it will leave a legacy for decades to come and will be a significant advantage to the North East and to Tasmania. Water from the new scheme is expected to flow in 18 months. Monika Dadson at Southern Cross News. After months of negotiations, Tasmania finally has a new gas supply contract for the next four years. Hydro Tasmania and the owner of the Tasmania Gas Pipeline have been locked in discussions about the supply since the middle of last year and the matter was recently sent to arbitration. Hydro Tasmania has agreed to commercial terms set down by the arbitrator. Due to confidentiality, Hydro says it can't release deal details but says it is fair and reasonable for Tasmanians. Could iPads be the next weapon in keeping our kids safe on our roads? The RACT today launching a new interactive online program as part of Road Safety Awareness Week. Teachers across the state will be hooking their students up to games, quizzes and videos to educate kids on road safety. Less than 60% know how to cross a road safely. Uh, so this resource will ensure that we're getting to children at the right age and teaching them so they can be safe for the future. The Road Safe program is available in schools statewide. A brand new shopping precinct will be unveiled in Hobart tomorrow after four years of development. The Icon Complex has been re rebuilt from the ground up, promising new brands and a boost to the state's economy. A hive of activity, with final preparations underway ahead of tomorrow's grand opening. The highly anticipated Hobart Icon Complex, almost ready for the public. 
Oh, well, we will be, yes. Yes, we are prepared. We've had a lot of people helping, people down from the mainland and lots of staff, my staff. So exciting to be in such an iconic um, area of Hobart and centre and right outside of the Myers. So, you know, Dusk is, you know, uh, an Australian brand and so excited about opening up here tomorrow. Liverpool and Murray Streets will be connected via the redeveloped Maya store and the five-level shopping complex, welcoming big brands to the city such as cosmetic giant Mecca Maxima and European fashion retailer Scotch and Soda. We feel we bring a, a new dynamic to, to the fashion industry here in, in Hobart and um, with a really in European inspired product. So it's going to be incredibly exciting. Kellis Group have real confidence in the Tasmanian economy and this is bringing some fantastic brands new to Tasmania and we're really excited for the job opportunities that it's going to bring. The Icon Complex will also feature a gourmet food court, another new attraction for tomorrow's unveiling. There'll be entertainment in the centre and some great new food offerings for Hobart to try. Ruby Kamein, Southern Cross News. The Launceston 10 is shaping up to be another success with entry numbers on track to beat last year. The pre-race festival is also expected to be a hit with big crowds predicted to flow on from an AFL fixture at Utah Stadium. It's being hyped as a running tourism triumph, landing the Launceston 10 on a weekend, coinciding with the Hawthorne Port Adelaide clash at Utah Stadium. The idea of taking a, a running holiday is a very popular one. It will give runners a chance to attend the pre-race festival in City Park on Saturday after the footy, before pounding the pavement on Sunday the 3rd of June. And then when they finish on Sunday, I come back to the village and have another beer, another wine and some more crepes in City Park. Sinead Diver is locked in to defend her women's crown in the 10, although men's title holder David McNeil is at this stage unconfirmed. The event's ambassador is best known for his merits on Mount Wellington. Local runner and school teacher Dylan Evans is a four-time Point to Pinnacle champion. For me, it's all about just getting people active and being involved. It doesn't matter what sport. The event is receiving strong interest from runners again this year. In fact, organisers say they've had four times as many interstate entries as this time last year. Overall, the experience is, is so much more than it has been in the past. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. The Three Capes track has won the Property Council's Tasmanian Development of the Year Award. The track has been lauded for its sustainable construction with the decision to airdrop materials for the cabins drawing praise. The Property Council says the track has been responsible for a spike in tourists coming to Tasmania for overnight bushwalks. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. A fourth straight positive session has taken the Australian share market to its highest level in two months. The ASX 200 index has risen by 35 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 75.09 US cents and 107.03 New Zealand cents. The basketball and after shocking starts to the Siebel season, which has seen the Torns and the Chargers win just two games between them. The sides will be desperate to turn things around this weekend when reigning champions Geelong travel down to the state. With import Clara Wisher still out with a knee injury and star player Kathleen Shear potentially sidelined after hurting her ankle in the side's loss to Sandringham last weekend, the Chargers can't help but feel like they're in the midst of an early season curse. Not much has gone our way um, and I guess the other thing is that the league's gotten much tougher and some of the firepower that the teams have thrown at us so far um, has been you know, pretty heavy. Five games down and with just one win to their name, life doesn't get any easier for the undergun side this Sunday at the deck with Geelong in blistering form so far this season. Once we can get our full team on the floor together, I think we're going to be a force to reckon with. We've shown so far, uh, even in the games that we've lost, um, that, that when we put it together we're, we're pretty potent. Languishing down with their interstate rivals on the bottom of the league ladder, the Torns meet the Supercats at home on Friday night. Still stinging from last weekend's 28-point thumping at the hands of Sandringham. But coach Derek Washington is adamant they still have what it takes to turn things around with the full squad at his disposal for the first time this year. Everybody's new to everything that I'm teaching them, so I can't expect them to be right on point right away. It's going to take time. from have got Allie Wilson, Lauren Nicholson, um, Ansfield, and my role players, Emma, Emma Haywood, Allie Partridge, um, which we didn't have them last game. Uh, let's just be able to step up and should we get the job done. 
Launceston's two MPL teams have secured what could prove crucial home ground advantages for the upcoming Lacassell Jack Cup semi-finals. But standing in their way are two sides who know exactly what it takes to claim cup glory. With the remaining sides desperate to avoid the dreaded road trip northwest to Valley Road, things fell into place nicely for the Rangers, securing home ground advantage against Devonport in today's semi-final draw. The Northern Rangers haven't yet been in the FFA Cup. Uh, it's a wonderful experience for clubs and, uh, and it should be a cracking match. The Rangers will head into the match as underdogs after Devonport claimed bragging rights in the side's MPL clash just two weeks ago. But the 2016 Cup champions can ill afford a slip up with Cup football a different beast altogether. If you're in the club, you want to win it all. Um, but look, it's a very important carrot and uh, it really is a, it's a high priority for clubs. Launceston City hosts South Hobart in the other semi final matchup, with the side's most recent NPL meeting ending in a nil all deadlock. And with City sitting second on the league ladder following an impressive start to the season, South Hobart will need to channel their Laco Cup experience, which has seen them claim two of the past four titles. Anything could happen at home at Buckley Park. It's a tough road trip for South Hobart who have a younger team, so that is again is going to be a really good matchup. The matches kick off on the 19th and 20th of this month. Good evening. Hobart, Burnie and Devonport all in the high teens today. Launceston a bit better, reaching 20 degrees. King and Flinders Islands our top today with 22. Temperatures still above average, mostly between 2 and 6 degrees. Campania 21, Fingal 20, Strawn and Grove 19 today. Smithton Friendly Beaches and Grove 18 and Lowhead 17 degrees. There was cloud cover over Tasmania today, but it was all high level and not holding much moisture at all. Very wispy looking stuff that. However, the cloud band with the cold front over the bite may be a little more productive for precipitation as it moves our way. More high level and middle level cloud is over south and western Australia and upper level trough has cloud over eastern Australia. Tomorrow two cold fronts are lining up to visit Agfest. A high pressure system moves over western Australia and a surface trough lies over the interior. Winds north to northwesterly at 15 to 25 knots reaching 30 knots over the west in the afternoon. Fairly strong northerlies inland as well. We have a strong wind warning from South East Cape to Stanley up the west coast, a small craft wind alert for the lakes. For Hobart, partly cloudy and a top of 22 tomorrow, slight chance of rain. Partly cloudy for Signet, 21 and 21 the top for New Norfolk with a late shower moving through. Launceston, late rain and 22 degrees, 19 for Devonport, late showers for Campbelltown as well and 21. For Burnie, rain developing, 19 the high, 20 for Strawn and rain also for Smithton, 19 degrees. And for St Helens, a late shower after a mainly fine day, 22 the top, 23 for Swansea, late showers for Fingal and 23 as well. On Friday, rain tending to showers before contracting to the west, south and Bass Strait in the evening. Showers spreading statewide on Saturday during the afternoon mainly and fine on Sunday with another shower over the west and far south. Partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow, rain clearing from Adelaide but arriving later in Melbourne, mostly sunny in Sydney and 27 degrees, a little cloud cover for Brisbane and a sunny 33 for Darwin. Little cloudy over Hobart, 15 at the moment, Launceston 14 and cloudy, cloudy also in Devonport and 15 degrees. Joe got through tonight's weather without too many hiccups, uh, hiccups. so uh, back oh. to you. Oh no, you didn't just do that. Oh yes you did. Alright, thank you very much Murph, that's all from the team. Have a good evening, bye bye.